Hi everyone. Welcome to Career with Kalpi. In the last session, we had an insightful conversation with Smita Shetty on executive coaching. The link for that session is also available in the description below. Data science and quantitative analytics is one of the most sought after fields in the corporate world today. In today's session, we have Shraddha Avasthi, who's currently a director with Gartner in the field of data science and quantitative analytics. She has around 11 years of experience across firms. She is an alumna of IT Kanpur and ISB. She also has a PhD from Northwestern University. Hi, Shraddha. Thank you very much for taking out the time to be on the series. Really excited to have an insightful conversation with you. Well, thanks, Kalpi, for inviting me anytime uh, for you, both of us being from IT Kanpur. Uh, so totally excited here as well. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so first of all, I see that you know you've moved across firms. So maybe if you can tell us a little bit more about your career journey across multiple functions, and then how did you pivot your career around data science and quantitative analytics? If you could share the strategies behind these career moves. All right. So uh, see if, if you look at. Uh, maybe my LinkedIn profile or CV, it appears that, you know, I've moved around quite a bit. But uh, if you look at from at it from my point of view, I've always been in data science and quantitative analytics, right from the time uh, at IIT, right? I was always very enthusiastic about logical reasoning. And that's been the common thread through whatever I have done uh, till date. And technology surely excites me through and through. And I'm still an engineer at heart. So, if, if you look at my career journey, um, I look at it from when I was in maybe sixth standard when I was first introduced to coding and I used to love it, absolutely love it. Um, then, you know, maybe 10, 12 standard, I still com had computer science as one of my um, subjects, which I was totally enthused about, wanted to be in one of the premier institutes, which was IIT Kanpur, surely. And I got the opportunity there. All my electives were in computer science. Uh, so that, that sort of common thread ran through. Even during my PhD, I was majorly into data collection and, you know, using MATLAB, SQL, and all these uh, languages to do data analysis and then statistics. So uh, then I went into Intel. Intel was also all about data collection, 24-hour machine data collection, product data collection, and analysis of that. So if you look at this um, whole journey of my career, it's it's been a common thread of using a lot of coding, <laughs> using a lot of data for analysis, using a lot of statistics for analysis. However, on my return to India, which was more of a personal de decision, I would say, um, what, what essentially I was thinking very closely was the kind of work that I did at Intel in the US uh, didn't really happen in India. India is more about, you know, uh, the design aspects of products, semiconductor products, which which I was not a part of. I was more on the, you know, product uh, technology development aspect of it, which does not happen in India. But unfortunate, but, you know, there are other ways to still use the skills and techniques that, that you know of. And data science was a natural thing for me to get into, essentially. Um, the only... Uh, sort of pivoting, like you said, right? Um, how have you pivoted into data science? The only pivoting that I did really was to get into business analytics. So data science and quantitative analytics, uh, while it is, you know, very, uh, people say it is uh, a 21st century thing, the next job for 21st century, but uh, being realistic about it, it's existed since the 1960s. Honestly, it's just that the compute power and the storage uh, capabilities that we have now allow the use of those algorithms that were built way back in 1950s and 60s. So that's the only thing that's new that is happening in data science and quantitative analytics. Um, but using it towards business analytics was something that I pivoted to. Uh, when I did my, uh, you know, coursework at ISP, that surely helped me understand how it might be used towards the business problems that are there to solve. Uh, while, you know, all the tools I was already used to using, like Python, R, SQL, all of those I was using even at Intel and prior to that as well. So um, it's been very logical in my head. I think, uh, you know, the strategy that I've uh, always applied is you should have some skill, which is a relevant skill, um, 
that that allows you to be fungible across careers let's say that um right. often times uh, that helps you you know sort of innovate as well all this uh, jumping across industries i would say that that brings this unique skill of thinking very different you get to you know interact with different kinds of people uh in from different walks of life from different uh, you know geographies as well as has been in my case it has really helped build my mind uh to be very flexible and uh not be confined to a set uh you know fixed ideas so i always try to think out side of what i see happening around me and i would explore and go for it essentially so my strategy has on, always been that you know you should have a set base of skills um with those skills then you can play around with essentially <laughs> that does that make sense? yeah that makes sense that's an awesome description thank you so much um uh, so then i think the next question on that is sure like you had this base of data science and quantitative analytics from very early on in your life when you move into corporate career how do your roles and responsibilities then change as you grow you know from let's say an analyst to now a director what does a day look like a typical day look like in the life of a director mhm um see a, a natural thing that happens is that uh, you do less of execution and a lot of uh, people management and you know you start diving into strategy as well which which involves let, less of using your skills but around the use cases of your skills right um, building strategies around that uh, however in the field of say particularly for data science and analytics you know no matter where you are and uh, how high up you go if if you don't know what's happening at the execution level and at times you cannot dive into it then it will be hard to be even a people manager because often times uh, you know when when people are stuck with their code uh, stuck with you know uh, a particular logic in the algorithm you have to dive into the uh, you know basics of it and the execution aspect of it it's it's it becomes a little tricky because then you have to learn to zoom in and zoom out depending upon where you are at that point in time if you are sitting in a strategy meeting you have to zoom out if you are sitting with your team you know uh, problem solving on a particular task then you have to zoom in it gets a little challenging but the more you do it uh the easier it gets honestly uh roles and responsibilities like i said it it does change from heavy execution into you know lighter execution but you cannot hope to get away from it especially in this field uh because in a lot of other fields it, it is possibly possible uh, once you become a manager you know you focus mostly on strategy and people management and that would be it uh but here you know it, it's it's very hard to get outside um uh, of the execution aspect of it and hope that you know your team will carry everything through and all will be hunky dory because you you are actually uh, everything starts with a code and ends with a code <laughs> uh, fortunately or unfortunately i love it i love that aspect of it and people should you know realize that uh, execution is something you cannot get away from if it if coding and you know logic doesn't excite them then maybe you know they should think of some other career <laughs> uh eventually if they if they want to move away from it is what i'm trying to say but i'm sure there are a lot of people who are enthused by uh being able to solve problems in a logical way numbers excite me uh the very fact that you know um you can even convert text into numbers that that's also a very interesting aspect of it uh so uh, overall you know you should have that mindset of uh being able to zoom in and zoom out on a daily basis uh depending on which meeting or which um problem you are trying to solve at that point in time makes sense and how does your typical day look like uh see uh, uh, <laughs> in the role that i'm in right now uh, a typical day is also about coordinating across geographies because i have you know people reporting to me sitting in the uk sitting in the us uh including india and then you know we have other ancillary teams we work in a very matrix environment in singapore in europe so it it becomes a lot of coordination as well so you would say that you know a lot of time goes into meetings maybe i would say 
50% of my time goes into meetings and 50% of my time goes into execution as well. Got it. That makes sense. And just out of curiosity, was it hard? To, because it, it seems like you're so interested in the execution part of it as well as you were growing um, up the ladder. Was it hard to kind of get out of the execution mindset and almost like delegate a lot of that to, to the teams? It, that's an interesting question. You know, uh, was it hard to get out of execution? It's still hard for me to get out of execution because, you know, uh, like I said, it, it's really exciting for me. I Every time a new problem comes in, I do want to sit with my team uh, to solve it out at the execution level, uh, to code it out at the execution level, which I also do uh, quite a bit. Uh, but, you know, it's not been uh, very hard because eventually you have to think about uh, your role as well that you know you are a, you are serving a certain role and you have agreed to serving a certain role uh, which includes making sure that people are getting the necessary training so you know i do run training programs as well uh, within my organization uh, on analytics and you know on tools uh, such as power bi so um, i do invest quite a bit of time in upskilling uh, others then, um, you know, uh, I do realize that with the role that I am in, I have to think about the strategy of my immediate team and, you know, my ancillary teams as well, um, budgeting and, you know, all, all the other aspects of it, calibration. Uh, so all of those are my responsibilities. And um, I don't think it's been very hard to transition into it. It started small for me, uh, maybe in uh, 2006 when I started leading teams, really. Um, and I didn't start with very big teams from the get-go, right? So it, I have sort of eased into the whole process, maybe, yeah. you know, kudos to the organizations that I have worked with. So um, I never felt that it was too hard to transition from being, uh, you know, an execution-level uh, employee to a uh, management-level employee. Got it. Thank you so much. That makes sense. Uh, so question around hiring then. It seems like at all levels in data science and quantitative analytics, people need to have certain technical background. But for folks who are not from, let's say, traditional background, then is there anything specific that they can do to kind of enhance their skill sets? So what do you look for when you are hiring people? I've seen all sorts of people during hiring, right? That there are people who are technically very strong, uh, but logically very weak. That also does not work out too well with uh, data science. Uh, I've seen people who are technically very weak, uh, but logically very sound. Unfortunately, that also do doesn't work out too well. But if you are somewhere in the mid of both, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It does work out. And I'm not saying that only engineers or maybe IT professionals can get into it. I have seen people with the background of economics get into it. You lead successful startups out of it too. Um, from my observation of the people that I've seen, mostly people with some sort of a mathematical background uh, because that helps in building logic and reasoning. Uh, right. And at least an openness to uh, you know, use of tools and technology those people work out really well. Um, and I have, you know, trained people who have had no coding experience at all. And they have been able to pick up these skills quite well, only because they had that, you know, logic and reasoning uh, very strong. Those were their strong points. And uh, they were very open to use of technology and learn it because you cannot escape it. You'll have to learn technology to, you know, uh, do data science. You are dealing with very big data sets that won't fit into Excel uh, analysis. You have to use these tools, fortunately or unfortunately. And, you know, as you go into AI and things of that sort, those models don't uh, run in no, no code platforms. You, you have to uh, use some language to run those programmatically. Uh, so I would say, it, even if you maintain an open uh, mindset, at least people who want to test out whether, you know, uh, they might uh, find this as something of interest to them, they, they can try out very simple codes to see, you know, whether they can add things, subtract things and figure out in their hearts whether, you know, that is something that would excite them. Because day in and day out, you would uh, besides looking at patterns in numbers, dealing with numbers, uh, you'll also have to, you know, know the right codes, the right logics to build, the right algorithms to build, to be able to analyze as well. 
Um, so yes, I, I don't feel that if you have uh, this notion uh, of uh, you know having an IT or technical background, only these people can do it. I, I don't agree because I have seen myself people from other backgrounds going also doing too well in this. Only th difference that I see in such people is that they are very strong with their logical reasoning and they have openness to technology. Thank you, that was super helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. So coming back to your role, how do you define success in this role? What are the goals that you make for yourself as the director for next year or so for the next three to five years? See, as a director, if you would say that, uh, you know, uh, what do I see my success as is basically um, in any organization, like in any organization, the organization's goals trickle down to the management level, right? Uh, so uh, am I able to fulfill those goals? That's my success in the role. But, uh, you know, in, in as a person also, and as someone who is excited to, you know, progress in their <laughs> careers as well, uh, I do keep this goal that, you know, at least I should learn one new thing every year. Uh, it could be a tool, it could be, uh, you know, um, a new way of analyzing data. Or uh, for this year, I've pick, picked up products and understanding how products are built um, and how I could use data science towards, you know, product analytics. So that's my goal for this year. So I, I set up my personal goals too, besides obviously the organization goals that I have to fulfill. Understood. Any last mm -hmm. tip or advice that you have for, you know, our audience who want to pursue a career in data science quantitative analytics? Uh, absolutely right. Uh, like I said, you know, I, I was using statistics and coding and but towards different uh, ends i think it uh, to anyone who wants to pursue data science and analytics quantitative analytics they they should sort of uh, look in their hearts whether they are you know excited about numbers logic uh, technology like i have said in the past uh, right. and what to what to use it towards right um, because you can have all the tools in the world. You can do business analytics out of it. You can do a lot of different things out of it as well. You know, uh, you have these self-driving cars. There are uh, different ends to which you can use data science and analytics. Uh, while this, these are good tools and techniques to learn and know, uh, eventually um, it, it would help anybody's career to also understand what use case they want to use it towards. Uh, right. So... Uh, the first step would be to learn all these tools and techniques and the next step would be to you know um understand what you want to use it towards makes sense thank you so much radha for the wonderful insights and sharing the wonderful journey with our audience wish you a very long and successful career and <laughs> thank you so much Thank you everyone for watching. I'm sure you enjoyed this conversation and got a lot of helpful insights into data science and quantitative analytics. Please let us know in comments if there are any questions that you want to ask on data science and quantitative analytics based on this discussion, or if there's any career path that you want to know more about. Stay tuned to Career with Kalpi. Keep safe. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Yeah.